night number eight here in Spokane, Washington, as we get set for the final match of the day as France takes on Canada. Hi, everybody. Bonjour. Merci. Thank you for joining us here tonight. I'm Alex Gould. Alongside me is U.S. Air Force Staff Sergeant Shelby Pruitt Johnson. Great to be with you tonight, partner. For France, they look to set up a star-studded showdown with South Korea. And for Canada, they look for the upset as well as their first goal of the tournament coming off of their nil-nil draw against the Netherlands. Should be some fun football tonight. Well, we know France, they are a technical team. They do great passing and they have the skill set to score a goal here. But Canada has had three days of rest and they've had a lot of chances to learn and grow from the games that they have played. So I think it is going to be a fun match tonight. Before we talk more about this match tonight, let's take a look at our previous match and some of the highlights as Mali got their first ever win in the World Military Football Tournament. They defeated the Dutch 3-1. Umu Kony had two goals and an assist in that win over the Dutch. Again, Mali's first ever win, something we saw Ireland get last night. What a special and historic moment for them. That puts Kony in with the top 11 players who have scored in the SISM tournament. She scored three goals over the course of the tournament and got a win for Molly. And realistically, she's tied for second. It's Haley Robertson of the United States, and we'll showcase this later on, but then there's 10 women with three goals each. So Coney added her second in the first half, added her third in the second half, as well as an assist. And Zoe Von Brookhoven there, displeased with the back line. It was a tough end to the group stage for the Dutch. And while the teams are marching out, we can take a look at the rankings right now and take a look at the standings and see how everything lines up heading into this match between France and Canada. To take a look at it there, again, Group A action will conclude tomorrow. That will be the final two matches of Group A and Group B. France here, Shelby, has the chance to start 3-0 Receive nine points, and as we said, that would be the match of the tournament coming up on Wednesday at 3.30 local time. Both teams would be playing to go to the gold medal match on Friday night. Absolutely. We're getting to our final days here of the tournament. They are fighting for their chance here at the gold for the championship and for the bronze matches, and we're excited to see how they come out here and play. And that's what we talk about all the time, Shelby, is to not look ahead, to not overlook your opponent. I know Canada so far is 0-1-1. They have one tie, one draw. It was against the Netherlands last match. They also lost to South Korea 6-0. But that's something for France here today to really showcase right away that they're here to play, to understand that they can't look forward to that South Korea match until the conclusion of this match tonight. Well, Canada knows they're standing in their way for their shot, and so they're going to make it hard, very hard here for France to score a goal. So Canada today, again, they're looking for that first tally, that first goal into the back of the net. We said that in last night's match as Ireland defeated Belgium. Ireland got a critical goal late in that match for their first ever win. I know Canada, of course, has had plenty of wins in this tournament, but they're looking for their first win here in Spokane. As you hear the SZA march in the background, you can see it on your screen there. Talk about it every match. This unites the two nations, and there's a lot of little boys and girls who are holding the hands of these powerful women out on the pitch. It's one of the most perfect shots that you'll see all tournament long. They, every match, the Spokane Surf Soccer Club comes out here. Their players get to walk along. The players that are playing here in Union Stadium, these professional, or sort of professional ladies here, and what an inspiration to get to walk on the field there and before every match. So this is a march rounding out here in front of the crowd in Spokane. We will have the national anthem for Canada as well as the national anthem for France.
Captain of France. Two wonderful national anthems there for Canada and France. See the referees on your screen there. I think we're going to go to the tail of the tape first then take a look at the referees. So this is the storyline. We were talking about it coming in. France with those six points. Canada with one. Canada looking for their first tally. They have a goal differential of minus six. And then the tally for France right now is plus 12. Boy, have they been dominant. See the flip there. And the referees in tonight's match. You see the four there on your screen. Laura Rodriguez is the head referee from the United States. The AR1 is Megan Mullen, also from USA. Then the AR2 is Paul Kavana from Ireland. And the fourth official is Wout Tidell from Belgium. Now let's take a look at the starting 11. First for France. They are in a 4-1-4-1. Mark Mufro is the head coach. The keeper tonight for France is Solin Froshi. Left back is Vahe Salmon. The left center back is Lauri Bolsom. And the right center back, Colleen Guinou. Rounding out the back line, the right back is Leah Gutier. The holding midfielder is Melissa Goudar. The left wing is Lena Tivion. Attacking mid is Morgan Duporsche. Then the attacking mid on the right side of the pitch is Tiffen Brissonet. The right wing is Fanny Prony. And the center forward is Anissa Belkasmi. All right, let's take a look at the starting 11 for Canada under head coach James Landy. The goalkeeper tonight is Alex Hogg. Left back is Katie Fung. Left center back is Amanda Cordois von Spite. The center back, this is a 5 4 1 formation, by the way. So they have five in the back line to Canada. The center back is Katie McCaskill. Right center back is Kate Costello. And then the right back. To round out the back line is Claudia Rousseau. The left mid is Kaylee Carlisle. The center mid is Michaela Talbot. Another center mid and Kim O'Rourke. And the right mid is Paige Campbell. To round out the starting 11, the center forward is Emma Perry. As both teams are on to the pitch here. Again, we appreciate you joining us for this match. It is 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 26.7 degrees Celsius. Not as hot, Shelby, as it's been the last couple of days. The sun is still shining here in Spokane, but both head coaches were really pleased with the weather today. Definitely, it, it helps not having the heat against your side here on the field, but it is still hot, still hot like you said. The turf, it, it exuberates some heat there for the ladies playing on the field. And we saw the Canadian team taking a photo over there on the sidelines before they came out. They are truly excited here to have a chance to score their first or to win their first game here. So 4 a.m. in France. Again, we say bonjour. Appreciate you joining us. Waking up early. If you're not up yet, I know you'll be able to see the replay on YouTube. Canada, parts of it, it's 7 p.m. We are about 90 minutes south of the Canadian border here in Spokane, but maybe you're at the base in Kingston, Ontario, or you're in Montreal or Toronto. It's 9 p.m. there, so hopefully you're staying up a little bit later tonight to cheer on these wonderful Canadian women. Number 20, Kaylee Carlisle. And number 23... That's Tiffin Brissonet, the attacking man who plays it out wide here on the far flank. Number two, Leah 
Even Brissonnet now plays it back again to Laurie Bosman. So this is the first time in this tournament, Shelby, we've seen a team play with five in the back. You got to think a lot of that is due to the fact that France scores and they score early and often in matches. I was thinking that too. Seeing five players in the back, a direct line across in front of the goal box. They're trying to defend that goal with every last bit of their players, and you can tell right here. Well, France has 13 goals in their first two matches, an 8-0 defeat of the Dutch, and a 5-1 defeat last match a couple of days ago against Mali. So we'll see. Can this back line, can these back five stifle this French attack? Not wide here, Leo Gauthier. Gauthier plays it in. Fanny Prony. Fanny Prony inside the 18. Cross was deflected. Back out to Gauthier. Gauthier. Deflection again. Kaylee Carlisle with a good deflection there. Behe Salmon. Left foot cross again is deflected. You know, even with having five in the back and then four right in front of it and then that one Harry up there in the front... You have to think it might be kind of hard not to be crowded in the back line there with that many players. Leah Gutier plays it short. Could be the first French attack. It pings off the post. Still alive. Cleared for now. It's going to be a French corner. Boy, that shot attempt there by Anissa Belkasmi just missed to the right. Great job by Macaskill there for clearing it out right there in front of the goal post. So Belkasmi had a tally against the Dutch in the first match they had. And boy, that thing clear off the post. So we get a corner kick. First one of the match on either side. Into the 18, low liner, cleared away again. And guess what? We will do it again. That is Vahe Salmon to take it, the left back. You know, something about Salmon, too, she's actually from Tahiti. She's only been in France for five years and here playing for the French team. Sockman into the six. Canada trying to get it out of there. That shot was deflected. That was Morgan Duporche who took the try with the right foot. So Canada holds for now. But this is what this French team does. I mean, they are trying to score 30 seconds into the match every single time out. They push as fast and as well as anyone. So precise on their passes. Quick give and goes. You're going to see that a whole lot today. It really is. The quick give and goes. The precise patch passes. They really do everything with a purpose. And you can tell, like I said, a technical team that uses all of their skill set to get it to the net. Now wide again here on the near side. And this is Fani Prony. Fani Prony. Plays it in to the 18. A right foot try is wide of the mark that time by Leah Gutier. And it will be a goal kick for the keeper and Alex Hogg. Alex Hogg is a captain in the Army from Ottawa. talking about Alex Hogg but her dad served in the Royal Canadian Air Force and was the reason that she joined the military her mom is a teacher in Ottawa I think we'll see this a lot in the game too. The French defense switching sides, passing it back, passing it over, getting it to the flanks in order to get another and a better attack on the goal.
Out wide again. This is Salmon. Salmon, left foot cross is nowhere near anyone, and it will be another goal kick. So seventh minute, nil-nil between these two. Francis control the possession, I'd say about 80% so far. And that's much to what we expect. French and the France, definitely the favorites coming in. As that's going to be a quick throw in here. Definitely the favorites coming in, no doubt about it. I think Canada knows that. That's why you see them stack five in the back. They're okay with playing a defensive style. I think Canada would be okay. Find a way and score one themselves. Maybe only allow one in the back of the net. This is a chance right away for France. Good save by Hogg. It's still inside the 18. Hogg has to recover here. Played back. Salmon dispossessed. Canada trying to clear it and get it away. They do for now. That shot was by Lena Tivion. And that shot is saved by Hogg again. Boy, that was well outside the 18, about 15 yards outside of the box. That right foot try was by Melissa Goudar. Absolute quick hands there by Hogg, being able to make those saves and just at least deflect it away from the goal box. Good ball here. Duporsche. Porsche stops on a dime, gets it back. Gutier looking for a teammate. Canada, can they clear again? They do for now, but it's right back to Gutier. Now plays it back to Besson. What I like about this French team, too, is they have a quick tempo, right? They make these plays quick, but. Leaving it perfectly. Gutier. But she was offside. Flag goes up. That's Paul Kavanaugh, the assistant referee from Ireland, who was on top of that. So they're quick, right? They're very quick with their plays, but they're also very calm, right? These the passes in the back don't seem rushed. They seem like they're taking their time to give their offense a chance to get in a good position to receive the balls they plan to pass back up. Right there. So they're calm, cool, quick, and collected. Exactly. <laughs> Goudar. Keep trying this near side of the pitch. They feel like they have an advantage playing through Gutierrez. They right back. We keep going back and forth between three teams. We've said it a lot, but it's the truth. Who is the best team in this tournament? Who's the quickest? Who's the most tactical? Who's the most patient? Three teams that we've queued in on are France, South Korea, and Cameroon. Good deflection there. Part of the back line. Katie Fung. like Fung was waiting. She was waiting for one of her teammates to come up, get in a position for a better pass, and then, then ended up losing it there on the sideline. Fung was a nice interception. Captain Fung is what they call her. Flies on the A310 tanker in the Air Force as a flight refueling system specialist. She has supported CF-18 in the international exercises and on a multiple NORAD missions. That's so what she does. She helps coordinate air-to-air -air fueling, planning with fighter pilots and parades the fueling operation station behind the cockpit. The more you know. That's pretty cool. It seems like similar in ways to kind of what they do over at Fairchild Air Force Base. Well, you know what's interesting about NORAD is they do that Santa tracking. I don't know if you remember that from being a kid. They... They track Santa during Christmas time, and that's something we pay attention to sometimes. So that's interesting. Have you ever found him? No, I, I, I haven't, personally.
Ball out wide again. Gutierrez, so quick. Right foot rocket is saved by Hogg. That is now the third save for Alex Hogg. Well, Gutierrez being a defender and pushing up that far, helping her teammates up there and making things happen. Gutierrez, 21 years old. I'd say 21 years young in the Army for France in the French Army. Right foot try. Hogg was outside the six there. Was in that in-between land. At about 12 yards inside the box. So Belkasmi took a try and tried to chase her down there. So 12 minutes in. Still a match so far possession-wise that has been dominated by the French. But the name of the game is scoring. They have yet to do that. So nil-nil here in the 13th minute. Big shout out to Melanie Arsenault, one of the managers of this Canadian team. Everything she has given us, not only a hero serving her country, boy, has she been a hero helping us out, Shelby. She has been phenomenal. Absolutely. Without the help from her, we wouldn't get to know that these Canadian players better and more personally learning about a little bit what they do on their off time, being that they are in the military, learning about their military job, and then coming here and playing football. There's the give and go. Could be the first. Left beautifully. Right foot try again off the post. Bell Casmi never wants to see that post again here on the near side. That's the second time she has put a ball off the post and clearly and visibly frustrated. How about Morgan Duporsche there leaving that ball for Bell Casmi? Just so witty is Duporsche to leave that ball inside the 18. I'm telling you what, Shelby, I was never a good football player, soccer player. My immediate reaction is, ooh, the ball's coming to me. I'm going to try and score. She leaves it because she knows Bell Caspi was on the back side of that play. That's what we've been talking about, too, is being aware of where your players are, having that charisma, and just like that one, that long pass, trying to get Gutierrez to it. But just having the charisma and the... And the skill to know okay i have don't have the best shot on it but my team might might and then leaving it there so we talked about melanie arsenal helping us out also got to talk about the three momagers is what they call themselves one of the coolest stories here but lauren flaherty as well as shannon brown who have helped this team tremendously all of the operations administration in the background prepping the camps those three wonderful women have really helped not only us, but make it show so that this team could be here. We talked about it earlier, but they found out in March that they were going to compete. There's an attack building up for Canada. Played out wide, intercepted there. But a better push by Michaela Talbot to center mid. Also, too, a big shout out to you and Mathieu uh, for France. Every single day, he comes to the pitch. He walks up to me and says, "It's a good day." Every day, every time. Well, it is a good day when you get to play Spokane, Washington, and Union Stadium against these players and these teams, and with your team and representing your nation. He's just a very happy human being, and he's given us a lot of information on France. Talked about this team. Very proud of these ladies. This is an attack building up here for France on the far flank. Now to the middle of the pitch inside the 18. Left foot tries deflected. It's left for Hogg, and Hogg will wait it out and then pick up the ball. That shot was by Tivion over there, the left wing, but it got deflected. So Canada, again, this back line has been stout so far, Shelby, through 16 minutes. And they've had a few good runs up there in the front, too. I think they, they were expecting right that four that five-man back 
to be more on the defensive, but they've had a few good runs in, into their offensive half. How about the speed here for France? Inside the 18, could set up the first goal. Nobody was there. Belkasmi left it, and in disbelief that time was Fonny Prony. Prony's intended target inside the 18 was Belkasmi, and Belkasmi tried to do what Duporsche did earlier and leave it for a teammate. She didn't think it was for her. That wound up potentially, maybe, costing France their first goal. Well, I think, too, we talked about crashing the goal. There was really only a few people, French offensive players, in the goal box anyways to get a deflection or maybe help and clean up the mess of that mistake. So a corner kick coming up for France. This will be Vahey Summon to take it. So Salmon here. Left foot, cr corner, into the box. Here's Prony. Prony sliding, trying to set up a teammate. Duporsche. Out wide again, Salmon, who just took the corner, trying to cross one in. Low liner. Left foot try, deflection. Saved by a member of the back line there for Canada. Gets it out of harm's way and forces the throw in. Really just stifling the attempts of the French offensive here. So that was Katie McCaskill who got it out of there. Made sure that in case the keeper wasn't in the right spot, she cleared it away. Dangerous pass there within your own six. Another shot deflected. That time it was off the left leg of Tiffin Brissonet. I was thinking the same thing. My eyebrows raised up a little bit. Super bold of there to pass right there in front of the goal. But it's out and they have been able to reset here since then. So 20th minute here in Spokane, nil-nil. I think you can see a lot of the strategy for Canada. Talked about it already, but they're playing with five in the back line. It also feels like they're playing with nine in the back line because France has pushed the tempo for the first 20 minutes. I mean, you can just see everyone. The only player that's even near center circle for Canada is number 16, their center forward, Nema Perry. Everyone else is back. We talk about strategies all the time. And I actually like it from the head coach in James Landi. I think he's looking around saying, well, why not? This France team they know is... Maybe a little bit more talented than this Canadian team. But I think Canada's hopes are, and we talk about this a lot, I think Canada's hopes are, hey, we frustrate them, frustrate them, frustrate them. Hopefully they don't find the back of the net. Maybe we get a counter opportunity. A 3v3 of some sort. We strike once and we win 1-0. A lot of times teams and nations are content with that. Because at the end of the day, you're trying to win a match any way you can. I like the strategy a lot. You have to think, too, the trust that they have in their midfielders to be able to make that counterattack. Okay, we're going to put you a little bit closer to defense, but make sure you get it up when we're on the offensive and being able to help Emma Perry there in the front. Great sportsmanship by Prony helping Carlisle up on the sidelines. Go, 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 
Here's Carlisle. Deflected again. France gets a touch on everything. We said it throughout their first two matches. It just seems like every 50-50 ball they win. Well, in that little area right there, there was three, four different Canadian players, and it almost looked like they were fighting themselves for the ball. Here's Fonny Prony. Du Porsche leaves it. Left foot try and stopped by Hogg. It was Gutier who took a try. I think Gutier was more trying to pass that to a teammate. Then it wound up trickling all the way to Hogg, the keeper. The speed from Brizone over there on the side to intercept and get the ball back to her defenders to switch the field. Impressive. Chance here for France. Deflection. Trying to find teammates here is Tivion. Salmon gets taken down edge of the 18. Would have been a penalty kick, but Laura Rodriguez, who was right there, deemed it to not be enough to blow the whistle. As home. Out wide to Gutierrez. Gutierrez, dancing with the ball, dribbling. Crosses one in. I was looking for Bell Casme. See if Carlisle wants to clear, and she does. Left foot cross and a try off the head of Bell Casme. Flag went up by Paul Kavanaugh, the assistant referee, so it wasn't going to count anyway. Here's Fung. Good stop there by Fung. Good move on Prony. Carlisle still possessing, looking for teammates. And this is where sometimes you'll, you'll get that challenge because you have five in the back and you have four in the middle of the pitch. So if they're playing defense, those four, and you got nine back there plus the goalie, so ten players, you're not necessarily going to have anybody up to pass to. What I love about this Canadian team, and it really is impressive, they are not scared at all. They do not care who they're playing. They're going to play gritty defense. Good ball here. Waiting for Salmon. Sockman. Left foot laser, and it's stopped by Hogg. Boy, she didn't need to touch it there, but I understand rather being safe than sorry in that instance. So Hogg couldn't catch it. It'll be a corner kick on the far side. Rather getting your hands on the ball than a deflection. We've seen the deflections off the goal post, the crossbar, have been deadly in a lot of these matches. And really the assistant for a lot of the scores here we've seen. Salmon to take it here. Trying to set up the first for France. It went off. The head of a French player. Now, Emma Perry. Back to Fung. Good movement here from Canada. Perry. Ooh, the idea was right. But Talbot. Boy, if that pass was there, Shelby, Talbot would have had all the space in the world. Those are the little things. It's a good build up and a good attack there by Canada. Not taking that away. If that pass is there, Kayla Talbot had a lot of green in front of her. I think, too, if it was passed a little bit quicker, they, they didn't really have a ton of help there, the Canadian team. So the water break here, hydration break. So these two nations are going to their respective sides. Going to get a little bit of a breather here, get some water. Again, it's been hot here in Spokane. It's the right idea by the committee and talk over some strategy. That gives us a chance, Shelby, to look at the SISM goal leaders 
to this point. You take a look here. Haley Robertson still the only player in the tournament with four. But as we said earlier, there are ten other ladies, ten other names, and I'll read them out. Kaylee Utley and Katie Gernsbacher, both from the United States, each have three. Sonia Batoshek for Germany has three. Young Min Lee for Korea, South Korea has three. And then two French players, Morgan Duporsche as well as Sarah Pallison, each have three for France. Tabe, Eto, and Ngama, or Nanga, excuse me, have three for Cameroon. And then Kony, Umu Kony, added two tallies for Mali in the match earlier to reach three. So how about that? So Robertson still at the top, everyone chasing her. That's a cool graphic put together by our team. I know John Anderson next to us on the left who's doing a lot of stats work. He helped out with that graphic, but it's cool to see him. We'll showcase that throughout each of the matches. We, don't, we wanted to let the first week build before we showed that. But two French players here that have the chance to tie Robertson. Well, you can see there, that's just a true testament to the skill that a lot of these players have. Well matched, getting 11 players with three goals throughout the tournament so far. It's it's really impressive to see. And then how, like I said, matched and well, 11 players. And just being able to score the three goals within. And it could be in one single match or it could be in multiple matches. But it still counts. Something else we didn't get to earlier that I wanted to talk about during the starting lineup graphic. But for France, no Shuli Pascaro today. One of their key members on the back line, the right center back, is out. She had two yellow cards in the first two matches. So back-to-back -back matches, mandatory, have to sit out a match. We've talked about it a lot, but I know we're both not necessarily in favor of that rule. We understand if you get a yellow, or excuse me, a red card in a match or a double yellow in a match, I'm good with the player having to sit out, but ooh, it's tough when you get a yellow in back-to-back -back matches and have to sit out the next one. But no Pascaro today. Those are the rules. Got to abide by them. Risone's speed is just phenomenal. She's running all over the field, making sure she gets a touch on the ball. Thirtieth minute. Nil nil between Canada and France. Pronies out wide here on the near side. Looking for Gutier. Gutier tried to find Prony. There's that give and go again. I want you to talk about how tough that give and go is to defend. You know, it, especially if you don't have enough defenders back there, you don't really, you can't anticipate a give and go at all times. And having to guard one player right and then moving to guard another player that's running behind you, man, that is tough. Gutierrez making a run here. It's going to be too much. Looking at the speed from Gutierrez, and it just goes past the touch line. That was just a little bit too far out of the reach of Gutierrez off the right foot of Gudar. So week number one in the books. This is the start of the second week which means we are getting down to the nitty gritty there. Not a great punt or kick by Hogg. It's gonna be a French throw in. But things are starting to shape up. We talked about it in the open in the pre-match. South Korea awaits France. So France, even with a loss in this match, still, and a draw, still could reach the gold medal match. But with a loss, that ball's chipped in to the 18, into the arms of Hogg. With a, with a loss, they would have to beat South Korea on Wednesday. South Korea already has nine points. France has six. But even if they lose, if they beat South Korea, then it goes down to gold differential. 
And that's how it would be determined. So France is in a good spot regardless of what happens here today. And then on the other side of the rankings, Cameroon. The first to nine points. They play tomorrow against Belgium. And unless Belgium stuns Cameroon. Miscommunication there. And finally, for the first time today, the keeper in Solon Froshi had to make a play. But unless Cameroon gets stunned by Belgium, Cameroon will be the first African nation to compete in the gold medal match. And there's so many stories, Shelby, that we're following and looking at and tracking. But those are the big ones. And talking about the gold medal match. Predictions, taking a look at things. So France and South Korea have set themselves up to try and play for the gold. And it also feel like France versus South Korea on Wednesday could be a gold medal match. They just happen to be in the same group. Here is Prony. She has some space. Fung trying to get back. Prony, right foot deflection, and it will go right to Hog. Hog is doing a great job there in the back, making sure that no ball gets past her. And with the help of her, obviously, five defenders helping her out is just really great. And you know what? They've held their own here for the entire first half. Katie Fung, the left back. Her and the right back of Mia Gutierrez have been going at it. Prony trying to set up a teammate here. Good deflection yet again, but it's right to Gutierrez. Canada has to reset its defense. Into the box, Bell cast me. But the flag went up yet again. Paul Kavanaugh all over it. Bell cast me has not timed the runs as well as she'd hoped. Three times now she's been called for offside. You have to think about how in sync that five-man back line is to be catching these players offside. Handball there was called on Kimberly O'Rourke. So a lot of looking at the roster for the Canadian team, a lot of them have played at the Royal Military College during the same years. And I'm sure a lot of them have actually had a chance to play with each other during 2017, it looks like, is where a lot of them kind of overlapped. I think that's interesting. They might have had a chance to at least meet each other, maybe play a few games, and now come back out here and play again. Talking about this back line, too, let's talk about Amanda Courtois von Spite. She joined the military as a direct entry officer at DEO, completing her Bachelor's of Science in Biomedical Physiology and Kinesiology. I can hardly read those words, Shelby. <laughs> That's how smart Courtois von Spite is. But also kinesiology at the Simon Fraser University, SFU. She says, I'm an Air Combat Systems Officer, an ACSO, in search and rescue on the West Coast. So she can't be too far from Spokane. No, we're not quite coast-ish. We're near the Idaho border. But about three hours from Seattle. Also, a cool story about Ordoav on Spite. She won a CAF Soccer Nationals in 2019 with the Canadian West team. She's a true footballer, true soccer player. 
Crony out wide here. France still trying to build. There's the head of Belcaspi again. Step back side of the play inside the 18. And a save by Hogg. Canada's back line as well as Alex Hogg continue to stand tall here in the first half. And it looked like that shot was taken by TV on. Out wide. Salmon. Salmon, can she keep it in? And she did. It's going to be a corner kick. Boy, how about that speed and the wherewithal to boot it off of the defender for Canada. So Salmon has it over there on the far flank. She wants to take the corner kick right away. Not even waiting for her teammates to get in there. Like we talked about, they are quick. Salmon, can she set up the first? Low liner, not a great ball there from Salmon. It was deflected by Kim O'Rourke. Salmon wants... I don't think we're tracking offside here by this French team. That's close to double digits in the first half. Well, Kavanaugh's been busy over there. He's going to get an arm workout in, Shelby. <laughs> Keeps Definitely. putting that flag up. It really seems that even on the many goal kicks that the Canadian team has had, it gets lost around the 40 to 50 yard line into the French defense. And this one knocks over the corner flag and <laughs> a couple of Canadian members there were celebrating that. That's hard to do. That's not easy. That might be harder than scoring a goal. The throw in here for France. This Canada team, they have fun. <laughs> they have a lot of fun. And right now, I think enjoying this. I know they've been on the defensive the entire first half, but they have not allowed a goal against a lethal French team. And much of this team are professional players. Left foot cross again. Belcasmi was there. It was deflected by Katie McCaskill. Well, that you mentioned the French team, most of them play. They play together as well. There's four of the players that play for OGC Nice. There's four that play for RC Lens. Two that play for Stade de Roms. And two that play for Flory 91. So they also have the chance to kind of play together and really get to know each other a little bit better and then come here and play at this team. Right foot try, keep looking for Teammates here. Left foot try saved by Hogg. That was going to go into the back of the net. Another great save by Alex Hogg. Bell cast me yet again. I mean, she's going to continue to get frustrated inside the 18. She has pinged two off the post, and Hogg has saved two against Bell cast me. Well, now here the entire Canadian team here is back in the goal box. This is not Salmon taking it. Different player. It's near the goal. It's on the top of the net and over the goal. And either a foul was called or offside. Something. It's not going to matter. But 41st minute. Nil-nil between France and Canada. I'll tell you what. If Canada wins this match, Shelby, it will be the most stunning upset that has ever occurred in the 20 years of women's schism football. I agree. And, you know, we haven't talked about it, but I feel like we have to mention it every match. The Sun, right? For Hog in the back goal, she has the sun shining directly in her eyes over here in Spokane, Washington. And it's got to make it real hard for her to see the ball in all of these shots here by the French team. And that's what, what I mean about them saying, listen, we don't care who we play. We're going to be Warriors out of the pitch, and that's what we're going to do. It is not bo She has looked like the most comfortable keeper in this match out of anyone. If it's affected her, she is not showcasing it. Absolutely. Here's Carlisle making a run. 
You can't see me, but I'm shaking my head because I agree. She has been very poised in the back goal right there. Good run there by Kaylee Carlisle. It honestly also might be the first time that a team who has started out, we don't have this stat, I don't even know if we could look it up, but a team that started out on this side, on their defensive third, like Canada is and now, with Hogg the keeper in between the pipes, inside the six, could be the first time that they don't allow a goal if France can't score here in the closing stages. And as I say that, to Porsche, so dangerous, it'll be a corner. I know Canadian fans right now are saying, why would you say that, Alex, out loud? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. French fans, minutes. of course, are thinking the opposite, saying, okay, well, maybe I'll jinx him. But this is how tough this back line is played. Alex Hogg has been tremendous. So TV on to take it. They have switched corner kick takers, so not Salmon anymore. It's going to be TV on for the second straight time. Left foot try near the goal, and Hogg has to make a save. Boy, that thing was bending and curving. Hogg, yet again with the sun there. Didn't matter. Another through ball and a good one here. Inside the 18, nice stop by Brissonnet. Brissonnet left foot, Bell cast me left foot, and it's a goal kick. Bell cast me has had a foot or a head on at least half the tries and attempts for France here in the first half. They have 14 shots here in this first half. It looks like only five on target. I say only five, that's still pretty darn good. But five on frame. August had to make five brilliant saves. It's really been a relentless attack here for the French. The last few, well, in the entire first half, really. TV own dispossess. Good defense there by Rousseau. Going to try the other side here yet again for Gutierrez. The outside of her foot. What a ball there by Gutierrez. Man, that is so skillful. So 45th minute. Canada, this is a win. It is a win for Canada. They go into the break and get to reset. I know their back line is gassed. Their whole team is gassed. They've been playing defense all half long. But if they go into the break nil-nil, Shelby, it is a win against this French team. No one has done this yet. Another right foot try. Trying to clear. Still you, just outside the 18. You can see the French offense. All They're all waiting, just waiting for the back line of the Canadian team just to make that step back so they can actually make a run and not be offside. Tivion yet again. And off the head, Hogg's going to waste some time. Pretty smart here before Bell Casmi makes her pick it up. So 45 plus what? It's going to be 45 plus two. So two additional minutes here in the first half. Possession has been close to 90-10. We'll call it 85-15 in favor of France. But what matters is the scoreboard. And there are zeros up on that board right now between these two nations. Canada has to hold. Their back line has to hold for another two minutes. Do Porsche inside the 18. See if Fung wants to get it out of there, and she does, smartly. France has yet to be shut out in a half. They know it too. They're making quick passes and trying to get it up the field to get at least one in the back of the net for the first half. TV on again. Brissonnet. Brissonnet trying to play it to her left. Inside the 18 and who else but Alex Hogg. She's been a ball hog today inside the six and that's a good thing. She has 
stopped a ton of these crosses and has made five saves. So Canada trying to hold off France for another 40-ish seconds. And this will definitely help that. So this strategy by James Lundy and the rest of this coaching staff, it's been a good one so far. I think it's frustrated France having five in the back and realistically it feels like nine in the back. Making it so that France has not been able to connect into the back of the net. And like you said, the French, they're pretty used to getting at least one in on the first half. So coming out here and just being stifled the way they have been has got to be so frustrating, like you said. And now it's up to Laura Rodriguez, the head referee from the United States. You can see Katie Fung was looking at Katie McCaskill there, and Katie McCaskill said, throw the ball on our attacking half. And that is the half. So for the first time here in Spokane, the French may be a little bit stunned by the fact that they didn't score. Despite dominating possession, dominating pace, and controlling the ball, this Canadian back line has hold stout and hold tough. It's nil-nil heading into the break, Shelby. You know, I w I'm going to say I did not expect this. I mean, the French team has gone so well at getting at least one to two goals in the first half for a lot of these games. And being stifled like this, the French team has got to be thinking, what are we doing wrong? Well, I don't think really not much. It's the Canadian team that's just holding it hard there in the back line. So nil-nil at the break. These two nations going to go talk it over. France is going to say... Hey, we've had a lot of good chances, just haven't found the back of the net. Canada's going to be fired up. That's the first time the French team has been held scoreless in a half. We have another terrific package for you guys. Our very own Matt Hester caught up with the Dutch team from the Netherlands to talk about their team and how excited they are to play in this tournament and to represent their service, their country, and women everywhere. We hope you enjoy. We will see you on the flip side. I love it. Yeah, it's such a fun game to do. It's um, and with these girls, it's just amazing. I love it. Yeah, it's such a fun game to do. It's um, and with these girls, it's just amazing because um, everyone, like the whole military, is coming together, and everyone knows something different about the army. So you're getting to know like your your country and the the the, the way to defend it as well. Yeah, so we're the um, national military team for uh, uh, soccer girls, I believe, um, and we're playing for the in the football cup. I heard about the national military team, and I was really, uh, you know, really cool. I thought it was really cool, and so um, I looked it up, and I, I uh, contacted the team manager and asked them if I could uh, um, come to the practice, and uh, that's how I got here. Every time if we have like a tournament, we would just um, meet up a few times before, train, and then come to the uh, to the tournament. So like like now here in the US, I think we met up like around ten times. So that means that we have ten days off from work, off, but we had to practice like um, and and make the best of it because you only have like ten times to meet up. So you need to make it worth it, and uh, and the rest of the year we're. All of us is just working their, their job. So for me, it's uh, immigration. But for some other girls, it's just army and, and doing what all the military do. And this is uh, just an extra thing we're allowed to do. But uh, we just uh, like to be part of it. Yeah. Uh, I got in pretty late. I didn't know they were already practicing for the World Cup. Um, and then also it's pretty tough to get uh, off in the Naval Academy back home. So I heard it on Monday, and we flew on Saturday. <laughs> when you hear about that you're allowed to join the team, you're just so you're so very proud that you're allowed to wear this shirt. And um, once I, when I was a little girl, long time ago, yeah, um, everyone is if you're if you're joining a team, doesn't matter if it's football, hockey, golf, it doesn't matter. You always want to like end up the highest that you can, and maybe in the end like go into a national team or something. 
And now that I'm in the military and this came on my path, you're like, oh my God, we're, we're just here and we're doing it. And uh, with this amazing girl. So uh, very, very proud. Yeah. Yeah, I just think it's super fun that we're all able to be here together. And uh, all the powerful women right now are standing up uh, for um, their nation and their rights in a way as well. To be honest, I just hope that everything is, that, that we're just working together and we can be proud of ourselves, just give it all, even if we lose all games, but we can say, well, guys, girls, we did everything, you know, and if you, if you can look back at this tournament with a, well, how do you say it, set aside feeling, like, okay, I gave it all, there was nothing more left, then I think uh, we can go home uh, smiling and uh, be proud of uh, what we did here. Back here in Spokane, 45 minutes to go here. Start of the second half between France and Canada. Shelby, first half domination by the French. 14 shots, six on target, but six big saves from the keeper for Canada and Alex Hogg. And the back line, the back five, and we can even call it the back 11, 10, whatever you want to say. Canada pushed everyone back and didn't allow a goal. They look pretty good. They do. Like you said, they've been stifling any attempt for the French to score a goal. And they might have talked a little bit in the locker room about, hey, we've been doing great on defense and we have made this formation to do just that. But what about offense? You know, when we, they do have the few chances to go forward, it looks like it's kind of breaking down a little bit there in the center line. And we were wondering when we were going to see Sarah Paulison. We were a little surprised not to see her start. And here she is right away looking for a goal. It's a save by Hogg yet again, but the flag went up offside. So Megan Mullen, the assistant referee from the United States, was all over that. But Paulison was one of the 11 players we showed in the goal-scoring graphic. She has three total goals through two matches. She scored two tallies against Molly last match in the 9th and 80th minute and one goal against the Dutch. So she came on for number eight. So Vahe Salmon is out and Paulison is in. This is Colleen Guinu. Guinu, just outside the 18. French are looking to fire right away out of the gates. And that is a clear foul. It's going to be a, a card as well, I think. Boy, that was pretty blatant there. Pulling the jersey of Katie Funk. I believe that was Prony who picked up the yellow card. So now Prony has to be careful. Looks like there's a sub for Canada as well. Avery Stover in the Royal Canadian Navy. Defender from Bowmanville, Ontario. Stover is into the match. Checking out is Emma Perry. So that's a defender in for a forward. So if you don't think James Landy's strategy and the strategy of this Canadian team is to play defense here in the second half, I think you're mistaken. Oh no, I was just talking about although their defense is doing very well, they're offensive. If they, they just do not plan to score here or if they just plan to stifle the French from scoring, it's kind of a little bit up in the air right now what that strategy is. And, and by the way, too, Paulison came in for Salmon. Salmon was the left back. So Paulison, who is a center forward, so it's a defender coming in for Canada and an attacker coming in for the French. I think it's safe to say that both these teams have those utility players that can kind of play a little bit of both positions Good and they're doing here. it here to Porsche to Porsche looking for a teammate Paulison could be an own goal boy that was dangerous there for Canada that was Kim O'Rourke who got her left knee on the ball it was almost disastrous but luckily for Canada it's going to be a corner kick here on the near side for France this is the third time that head coach Mark Buffra has changed 
the corner kick taker. This is going to be Morgan Duporsche to take it. Duporsche, who has three tallies herself, trying to set up the first tally for France here in the second half. Duporsche plays it low. Bell Casme. Bell Casme trying to find a teammate. Played out wide. Prony, right foot rocket. And guess what? We've said it before. We'll keep saying it. As long as Alex Hogg is going to make saves. That is the 16th shot for France. And the 8th save for Hogg. What a great play by both players. Prony just knowing that she didn't have time to really take any precautions. She shot it in there between all the players. And then Hogg catching that ball with that many players in her goal box in her way to see the ball and just catching it perfectly. Here's Tivion. Who was it last touched by? It was last touched by Canada. Team France. I'm assuming that's Claudia Rousseau who's rocking number 25 today. I have her down as 23, so said that earlier. I believe that's Rousseau, 25, because I think I saw 25 on the roster. But Duport's going to take it again. We just saw Duport take it about 60 seconds ago. This one's high in the air. And Canada clear. They can for now. Going to force a throw in. You can go with any analogy you want in this match. But David versus Goliath is one we talk about a lot in the broadcast booth. And this is what this matchup is. And Canada understands that. It's a reason they are playing gritty and tough defense, knowing that if they had three up front, their attacking chances would be minimal anyway, just because of how good the back line is for France. And that's a compliment because they understand how tough this match is. So to not allow a goal to France 50 plus minutes into the match is truly outstanding. You know, and I think that's why we've seen a little bit more aggression from the French team out here today is they're frustrated right they thought maybe that they were coming out here with their heads high a little bit off of their wins and being able to make some offensive plays here right foot ball flag went up Megan Mullen was all over it that time by Tivion she was trying to be set up there by Gudar and Gudar the ball was beautiful but the run was not timed well by Tivion you know what I like to see, though? I think there's a lot of people. Not, I mean, not a ton, but I think there's a well or good enough crowd out here coming here to watch the game today. I don't know. It might be the weather, but getting to have the community and maybe it's the fact that we're not too far from Canada either coming to watch these girls play. So free kick here for Canada and Rousseau. at least making the keeper move there for France. That was Froshi. And remember, Froshi is staring into the sun. Both of us stepped outside to see where the sun was at just before the start of the second half, and it is still very much out there. Good ball. Paulison. this could be the first for France. She's trying to tie Haley Robertson up at the top of the goal leaderboard. Playing it out wide. Inside the 18. Left foot cross and a try. Back to Guinu. And Guinu missed everything. What a good game of ping pong there that was. Going back and forth between a couple of players. And really just making sure that someone gets a touch on the ball for a try at the goal. 17 shots now for France. So there's the head referee, Laura Rodriguez. In the United States, so two U.S. referees here. We have a Belgian referee and an Ireland referee. Guinu. Switching sides of the pitch here. Another ball, guess what? Right near the 18. I mean, the motto for... Canada today is one and doubt, clear it out. That's what they're trying to do here defensively, doing it well. But by the way, I mentioned that Fung was coming off the pitch. 
And Stover was coming on. Stover's actually playing the forward position. So listed as a defender, but she's playing on the attack for Canada. When I sent Fung, I meant Perry, who of course came off. Looks like Belkasmi's. Oh no, she's going back now. Looked like maybe she was playing in the midfield. Switched her around. Now that Paulison came in. Right foot try. Guinu. Again, headed away nicely by McCaskill. Good interception there by Carlisle, but not going to get to it because Bizome was back there. France also has a great strategy, too. I mean, they have pushed everyone to try and score a goal here, but they are always leaving one defender there right near center circle, just in case Canada mounts a corner. I said corner, I meant counter. <laughs> Get to the corner flag and force a corner. In case they can counter one of these French attacks. The Canadian team really has to provide some sequencing shots here and they're, I mean, they're at the center field, but trying to get up forward as much as they can. Canada trying to frustrate France as much as they can. That's what their strategy is coming in. 56th minute, we're now 10 plus minutes into this second half. And with every second that ticks off the clock, Shelby, France is going to feel more pressure and more pressure to try and score. Maybe that's when you catch France with a counter. Trying to prevent a goal here. and That ball was not exactly what TV Own was trying to do. And that's kind of what I think part of the strategy is, is with this frustration is you start to cause more mistakes, a little bit more frantic movements, trying to be a little bit quicker than you need to be from the French team, and that might kind of cause them not to score anymore. Well, score at all in this game here. Or Rodriguez says play on, and a whistle there. Good ball by Duport. And it's going to be a corner kick. So Prony forces the corner for France. Corner kick for Team France. So Tivion to take the corner this time. Duport is clearly taking them on the near side of the pitch. Tivion will take them with the left foot on that far side. Is this the French opportunity? 57 minutes in. Off of Belkasmi. And nope, it's going to be deflected. I remember from Canada, it looked like that was Cordois on Spite who at last touched. So Tivion will do it again. Tivion, left foot. And right to Hogg. So Hogg, although she's wishing herself, her team, a good luck in trying to play the best game she can here today, she wanted to give a shout out to the CFB Petawawa women and men's soccer teams and wish them a good luck in their league games. So I think that's kind of a testament to her character there, talking about how she's focusing on her game here at Union Stadium, but wishing a good luck to a couple of her teammates and some friends that she knows from Canada. And you know that they're wishing her good luck here. And I'll tell you what, she's done pretty well, but Prony trying to set up the first for France, and there she is again on cue. The ball hog. And Alex Hogg yet again stifling the cross by Prony. Paulison was wide open on the backside of that play. If Hogg doesn't get there, it's a goal for France. Rousseau clears it away for now. Ball Hogg and Football is normally not a good thing, but it's great when you're a keeper. You're stopping the ball as much as you can, making saves, stifling crosses. 
Now Katie Fung doing her part as the left back. I think we maybe need to talk to James Lonnie, the head coach, to try to get a nickname made up for Alex Hogg there in the back. Right foot cross was deflected. Still inside the 18. Good battle here. Another cross. Stop me if you've heard it before. But Gutierrez was looking for a teammate, and Hogg was there again. Yeah, there is Melanie Arsenault there. And a chance here for Paulison, but the flag goes up, so... That attempt is going nowhere, but there is Melanie Arsenal. She's who has been helping us out with all the information. Melanie Arsenal is phenomenal. So maybe we got to give credit to Melanie for coming up with this scheme here for Canada. You know, Melanie failed to mention some of her personal information on these lists, but we know one thing, she is so proud of these ladies playing in this tournament and really loves getting to know each and every one of them a little bit better each day. Maybe James Londy giving the honor to Melanie Arsenault today to be the captain of this ship. So whoever came up with this strategy, it's working so far. And forget just the strategy, how about these Canadian women? So tough like we talked about in the first half. Not playing scared of this French team. Understanding what they're trying to do here today. And sometimes it's okay to play as the underdog. To know you're the underdog going into a match. To embrace that role. I think that's what this Canadian team has done so well so far. Through the first 60 plus minutes. Still a lot of time here for France to find the back of the net. Good ball. Prony. Trying to find it here. Prony runs out of real estate and frustrated there. There is Tech Sergeant Kuhn who almost got pelted <laughs> with the ball. That is some of the frustration here. And you see it visibly there. France is used to scoring immediately. As Katie Fung is down. past the touch line over there for Canada. But that's what we're talking about. Melanie herself running out to see if Fung is okay. Actually, I think that's the trainer, which makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, I know Melanie wants to sprint out there. So Katie Fung is working so, so tough and so well back there. Going to get back up. You know, she's going to want to check in immediately. Canada does not want to play down a woman here. So Fung will check back in whenever she can. Fung is actually new to the military, too. So this is awesome that she gets to have her first couple of years here playing with the Canadian team. And she's making a difference. I'll tell you that much. Here's Gudar. Lays it out wide. Guinu. Guinu. Left foot. Deflection by Rousseau. Rousseau is also doing really great there in the back. Goudar may take one here instead, has a teammate. And nobody there for France yet again. Seventeen shots to zero for Canada. This sport at times is very unfair. So despite France having possession, it has to be about 90%. It is nil-nil here in the 63rd minute. Trying to time the run there was Tivion. Instead, it's played out wide to Guinu. Guinu trying to get it to her right foot. 
Udar. Prony. Prony, so fast. Of course she gets there. Plays it into Duporsche. Duporsche, so good at setting these up. Right foot cross, off the head, and into the back of the net there by Bell Casme. And France, who was threatening for 63 plus minutes, gets their first tally of the match. Bell Casme, who was so frustrated, Shelby, in that first half, gets one off the head and into the back of the net. Well, you saw that there. They were frustrated in the first half. Let's take a look at just passing it there, crossing right in front of the goal like we've talked about, and a beautiful header right there to the side net. And this time, the post was kind to her. She pinged two off the post in the first half, this time on the better side of the post and into the back of the net. So Bell Casme has her second goal of the tournament. And now at this point, Sheldy, I wonder if Canada switches their style around. Instead of playing super defensive-minded, now you need a goal. Give them so much credit. 63 minutes without allowing France, one of the best attacking teams, if not the best attacking team in this championship setting. It's goalless, but they finally get one there from Bel Casme. And again, who sets it up? This team and this attack runs through Morgan Duporsche, who has three tallies herself. This time, very unselfish. Beautiful cross into the 18. And goal for Bel Casme. It was a, a relentless attack by the French team, and it paid off there with that beautiful header. Substitution for Team Canada. Coming off the field, number 15, Kate Fung. So Katie Fung coming off the pitch here. He had a really terrific match as the left back. And checking in for Canada is number four. That's Jesse Leah Roberts. Jesse Leah Roberts is into the match for Canada. Roberts is a second lieutenant in the Canadian Army. She graduated from the Royal Military College this year with an honors in English degree. Pretty Good anticipation of the pass there by Katie Costello. Katie Costello with a good interception. So it took 18 tries, Shelby, 18 shots, and France finally found the back of the net. For a while, I think a lot of people were wondering, could Canada hold France scoreless? Now the French are trying for their second here. Right foot, good ball, Tivion onside. Flag stays down, Tivion stops it with their left to her right. There's Paulison. Paulison, right foot, rocket, are you kidding me? Sarah Paulison yet again for France. And step aside, Haley Robertson. Paulison and Robertson now tied for the goal scoring leaderboard. That is unstoppable, Shelby. 2 0 France. It really, like, the, the work is paying off. That one goal was a motivator. Look at her, just a step to the side and a nice kick, knowing that there's four defenders coming from me from the Canadian team, just making it perfectly into the side net. Paulison, who had two last match against Mali in the ninth and 80th minutes, also had a tally against the Dutch in the first match, now has four on the tournament. And we were surprised. We talked about it. Didn't start this match. Came in at halftime. Maybe she was banged up a little bit or tired. So France has two big ones here in the second half. So now that goal leaderboard can be updated. Robertson and Paulison. Those are the two in the tournament with four apiece.
take a look there. That cross from TV owned. She wanted to cross it, but ended up going a little bit more towards Hog. Right around the hydration break here. She'll get a stoppage within the next 60 to 90 seconds or so. I just can't wait for France versus South Korea. I know we got 20 plus minutes left here, but that is going to be a showdown. Call it a star-studded showdown. That's what I'll call it in a couple of days on Wednesday. If you want to see two teams, the most technical teams in this tournament, who are so in sync, play as a family, play together, it's France and South Korea. Great decision there by Bezon. We know probably the South Korean team is most likely watching this game here unfold at home and in the barracks that they're in, but they know now France is the next team to beat. I know that they're probably strategizing already to get set up for a win. Absolutely. Guinu trying to set up a third goal here for France. Here's Tivion. Miscommunication that time between her and Paulison, but finds the feet of Brissonnet. Right foot into the box. Again, Duporche is left foot. And we're near off the foot of Brissonnet. Two subs getting ready to check in for France. 17 is coming on for 12. So that is Vivian Boudot. So Vivian Boudot is into the match for Fanny Prony. And then the other sub about to check in. 15 for 20. So that's Christy Gavary. Gavary, who had two goals last match and started last match. He's another player we were expecting to see in there. So Gavary is coming in and checking out for France is going to be Alina Tivion. So 15 in for 20. Chance here for Prony. Prony still into the match, trying to find Tivion. She's still in as well. Those two have not subbed out just yet. Right foot rocket, and wide of the mark. You know, it makes you wonder, why would the French team, after two goals up, be changing players? And you know what? I think they want everyone to get a piece of the pie here. They want to set up their players for some more goals. And like we said, Galvaris was starter last time, and not this time. So getting her a chance to play in the game as we get into our hydration break here. So hydration... Hydration break here in Spokane. 72nd minute between Canada and France. 2-0 France, thanks to a couple of late goals here in the second half. You have to think, France is riding high. They are so excited. They have been working for this goal for the entire first half, and Canada has been strong in the back line, and now that they have one and two goals that they are going to keep the momentum up for the second half, for the rest of the second half. So Melanie Arsenault talking it over with the Canadian team. you got to think they're going to go on the offensive here, Shelby, as we welcome you inside the booth here. Alex Gould alongside me is U.S. Air Force Staff Sergeant Shelby Pruitt-Johnson. Canada held as much as they could there, Shelby, but France a little bit too much here in the second half. You know, I think we were all wondering, can Canada hold? For the entire first half, they did it. And I was thinking, can they hold for the second half? But we saw here Fran the French team do what they do best, and that is score the goals. France and South Korea, I really hope you can join our team as well as these amazing women for that match. I mean, that is going to be a match of two teams, more than likely. Again, not ruling Canada out just yet. There's still about 18 minutes left in this match. But if France holds on here, Shelby, they'll both have nine points. They'll both be 3-0. and in the rankings, the winner of that match at 3.30 Pacific time here in Spokane will go to the gold medal match and likely play Cameroon. Well, like I said, I know that they're watching. And if you are watching South Korea, be prepared because France is really bringing it here on the field. Absolutely. And so now I know these ladies are getting back out onto the pitch here. But boy, what a match this has been. Canada held for about 60 or so minutes. And then... 
France wound up striking two into the back of the net. It was Bel Casmi off the header, set up by Duporche, who got the assist. And then Paulison, who did it all by herself, just outside the 18, somehow found the back of the net for her fourth tally of the tournament. Great cross there by Brissone, really setting up the field for a cross in to the goal box there. We know. Now Boudot, who just checked in. Boudot, left foot liner. That goes off of a member of the back line there for Canada. That is Kate Costello. Kate is a Marine System Engineering Officer in the Royal Canadian Navy. She's been in the military since 2017 and graduated the Royal Military College. She will actually be posted to a ship on the East Coast in September. So kind of finishing out her summer here with a fun soccer tournament and getting to go back to her job here soon. Corner here for France and Hogg somehow skying high to make the play. Despite France having two goals here, Shelby, this has been one of the best defensive performances we've seen from any nation. I mean, it really is. I know that was the mindset coming in, but to execute it is another thing. Well, when you see that many players back, like we talked about a little bit, crowding becomes a problem, communication becomes a problem, offsides becomes a problem, and that's <laughs> not an issue here. It really isn't. I mean, offsides for, for French is an issue, but the other way around. But it was right on cue. Offside there, Megan Mullen, raising the flag. But having to be so in sync with each other, the defensive line, to be in a line to make sure they're catching these French players, offsides is so talented and impressive to me staying in that line. Good ball here. Brissonnet. Brissonnet instead of crossing it in, stops. So free kick here for Canada. So Katie McCaskill takes it there. Paulison. Left foot try, now a right foot try, still inside the 18. Rousseau tried to get it out of there. There is Roberts. Now cast me. Looking for Paulison. Right foot cross into the 18. Good stop on the ball, right to left, and Rousseau got back. You know, speaking of Rousseau, she has been lauded a multiple times. She was the captain of the Royal Military College Women's Soccer Team 2019, won the Female Athlete Award and Women's Soccer MVP in 2018. So she has a ton of accolades, and you can tell it here she's a great defender. Into the 18, that was off the head of Boudot, and Boudot couldn't get it to go. Boudot, 
Left foot. Good ball. Left for Belkasmi. Canada still trying to clear. Boudot, right foot yet again, wide of the mark. Boudot being in a perfect position to receive that ball. And you know what? She's actually played in 2018 at the SISM tournament in El Paso as well. So she's kind of had a chance to play in this kind of environment and come back here in 2022 at Union Stadium, Spokane, Washington. He talked about Club Nice. It's her club team. That's where she plays. It's her professional team. We don't. Left foot. Couldn't find the head of her teammate there in Gavary. Trainer's coming on. Looks like that could be Duporsche that's down there for France. And it is. This is a player you cannot afford to lose if you're France. So 80th minute here. 2 0 in favor of the French. Interesting, you saw there too the Canadian team. They kind of came back in a huddle with Hogg, talking, strategizing a little bit more, trying to talk about how they can either stifle the offensive attempts or maybe have their own here in the last 10 minutes or so. so De Porsche comes off. She's played football since she was six years old. Part of Team Strasbourg is her club that she plays for. Now in the army. And Brissonne, who just had it there, also plays for Strasbourg. Yellow card coming here to Bel Casmi. And Bel Casmi, did she get a yellow in the first half? I don't remember here. No, I think it was Prony who got it. So that's the first for Bel Casmi. I don't remember who got it there for a sec. So that is Bel Casmi's first. So remember that four players for Canada joined this team a couple of days before they left. This team has done a great job of limiting France's chances here in this match. Now up to 20 shots. Another thing to talk about too, if I'm not mistaken, France had 14 shots in the first half. None reached the back of the net. So... France's percentage is much better here in the second half. They are two for six. But Canada's limited France here in the second half, Shelby, to just six shots. That could be the lowest total and should be the lowest total. That's Belkasmi looking for another shot and another goal for Belkasmi on cue. They've now scored three times here in the second half on seven shot attempts. Paulison sets up Belkasmi. It is 3-0 France here in the 83rd minute. She's been wanting that too throughout the entire game. You can tell she's worked hard and you can see her celebration here on the side. She has been working for it. After every goal and after every missed attempt, she's been hitting herself, just wishing she could have made it in. But that one was a product of the practice there for Belkasmi. Feels like Paulison is involved in every play, doesn't it? Well, Casmi gets her second tally in this match, and that is her third now of the tournament. So Bel Casmi now, you can put her into the top 12 names, I think it is. Tied for second with 
10 other players. So Belkasmi now has three tallies. We knew. Paulison just set up the last goal. Paulison, what a ball again. Guinu trying to get it to a right, maybe a little bit too unselfish there. Now another right foot try is high of the mark. Udo is she's really sliding to the side here and is honestly had a ton of room to really make some plays, but Russo is doing an okay job at kind of coming up to her, giving her some pressure before she's able to make a play on the ball. So that shot attempt was by Gutier. Make your predictions now. Who is going to the gold medal match? Is it South Korea or is it France? Belkasmi just missed the chance at a hat trick there. You just talked about Boudot, who's slipping through the defense here on the near side. Great ball into the 18, but Belkasmi couldn't connect. See, I'm interested here. The Canadian team, they're all kind of in the center. And, of course, there's a ton of them. So I think if they bring it out a little bit wider, it'll give Hogg some more opportunity to get it to a Canadian player's foot. Udo again just tried the left. Now the right. Paulison with a good run, but not timed well enough. Was off the mark, was offside. So we're... Not supposed to make predictions, and we're not going to between South Korea and France. But also, I truly do think it's too hard to predict, Shelby. I mean, these two teams have been dominant in Group B. As Rousseau gets deflected by Boudot, and a save by the keeper and Hogg. South Korea and France setting up for a heavyweight fight and a heavyweight match coming up at 3.30 on Wednesday. And funny enough, that 7 p.m. game, Canada's also playing, but they'll be first facing Mali at the 7 p.m. game. Canada's still looking for their first goal of the tournament. Molly got their first win of the tournament. Boudot ranging to her right. And then tried the near side of that post there. Got to give so much credit to Alex Hogg for what she's done today. She shut out France in that first half. Had to make six plus saves. Continues to work inside the 18, inside the six. French team is definitely trying their best to get a fourth goal on the tally and you can see Hogg wasting some time here waiting for it to, to pick it up and then give the Canadian an offensive attack here. Foot cross. Still looking for Belkasmi in there. There's been two hat tricks in this tournament. Haley Robertson back in the first match for the United States against Belgium. Robertson did it in the first half. And then Nanga by Cameroon 
did it in the matter of four minutes against Ireland. Don't cast me trying to be the third in this tournament to do just that. She's got some time to... Another save wow. by Hogg and Boudot, who got the deflection and deflects it off the American football crossbar. What a save by Alex Hogg, and then Boudot, who's kind of laughing about it, can't believe she missed from about five feet out. The MVP of the game, Alex Hogg, just making those saves and a little bit of the crossbar there too. And so it looked like Hogg got a hand on it, but actually it was all crossbar, but still great diving effort. And then Boudot is not gonna have a shot attempt any closer than where she was, could have tapped it in or walked it in. Missed high of the mark. It looked like from my vantage point that Hogg maybe got a hand on it, but did not. So I'm not going to go down as a save. It's going to be a save for the crossbar. And we're being told that this is the first time we've heard this. No additional time. No stoppage time being added. So that should end right about 90 minutes. I don't think you ever see that. Squeenu, Budo. Trying to make up for that last attempt. Trying to set up someone for a potential fourth. And it's going to be a corner kick. This will likely be the last attack of the match. Corner kick for Team France. So Gavary to take the corner kick here. She scored twice last match within three minutes. Plays it short. Udo back to Gavary. Gavary, can they set up a fourth? Bell cast me off the head. It's wide of the mark. Now we just wait on Laura Rodriguez, the head referee. Let's go, ladies. Finish it up. And that is it. France beats Canada 3-0. The French team who was frustrated through 60 minutes, Shelby, dominating the match but couldn't score, finally got one from their center forward, and Anissa Belkasmi. Belkasmi added a second later on, but not before Sarah Pollison, who came off the bench, connected into the back of the net. And France shuts out Canada 3 0. Absolute props to the Canadian team, the Canadian defense. Well, really, the Canadian team that played the Canadian defense. And Alex Hogg in the back, making all of those saves, doing a great job shutting out France for the first half. 25 shots for this French team, and you are right. Alex Hogg made 10 plus saves in this match. And you could see Canada, I understand that they lost this match, but they just played the best defense against anyone in the tournament. In my opinion, that going in as an underdog, right? So the team that was going them a lot of credit. And there's so many professional players on this French team. So it's only allowed three goals in the back of the net. I know Melanie Arsenault, James Londy have to be very proud of this Canadian unit. And you saw there on your screen the smiles of a Canadian team. They are walking off the field happy. I mean, they did lose, but they are excited just to be here and to have fun, to have this experience and coming together as a team and getting to know each other a little bit better and playing against these players from all these other nations. So we can take a look at the updated rankings here. So Group B action, they'll have one more day coming up on Wednesday. As you see, those are updated. France and South Korea. They join Cameroon as the only three nations that are 3 and 0. Oh. So France and South Korea. We talked about it a lot this match, as we should. It's a really big match coming up. The winner of France versus South Korea will go to the gold medal match, Shelby. Absolutely goals that have scored here for the French team and the shutouts that Canadian the defense have had for the French team. So the schedule for tomorrow it's the final day of Group A action the United States the hosts take on Ireland. Ireland coming off their first ever win here at the Military Women's Football Tournament and then Belgium takes on Cameroon tomorrow night Shelby Cameroon is looking to become the first African nation ever to reach the gold medal match 
All they need to do is draw or beat Belgium, and they are in. So we talked about France and South Korea potentially getting there. Cameroon trying to do the same. But that is it from us here on day number eight. Day number eight is completed. France defeats Canada 3-0. They set up a title weight fight against South Korea on Wednesday. We will see you tomorrow for the United States and Ireland at 3.30. Good night, everybody.